This video is the third installment of our OBC UA series. It includes a live demonstration of connecting the OBC data logger to the top server using OBC UA with encryption. All right, um, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna reset, go back. I, I want to demonstrate a connection to a remote top server via OPC UA. This time I'm going to make a connection using encryption, um, which does which does require exchange of certificates between the data logger and the top server. For time purposes, I have already imported my top server certificate into the data logger and the data logger certificate into the top server. But I am going to show you here locally um, where I was able to access those settings um, so that you know where to go if you're, if you're going to use these applications yourself. The certificate options for the data logger, you go to Tools, UA Options, and Configuration. And to import a UA server um, certificate um, that's going to allow us to connect to the server, um, top server in this case, you basically click the import button and it lets you browse to that certificate file that you exported from your UA server and brought to this machine. Um, as you can see, I already have my top server um, as a trusted server here. If I go to the client certificate, this is where I administer the certificates for the data logger. Um, I can use this to create a new certificate that I want the data to use for the data logger. Um, what I actually did here was export the existing certificate by clicking the export button. I gave that a file name, saved it to a specific location, and then copied that file over to my top server machine for import. Now for top server, I'm just going to go ahead and bring up my top server configuration and show you the steps that I went through to ensure that I'm able to connect to that. Um, first, you go to File, Project Properties, and we want the OPC UA section. Now, the first thing um, for the connection is you want to make sure that the UA interface is actually enabled, um, that this is set to yes. If this was set to no, a UA client would never be able to connect to your top server. Um, the other thing I want to make sure is enabled here is allow anonymous login. Since I'm not planning on using user authentication for this connection, this has to be enabled. If this is, if this is disabled, then uh, you would have to have user and password configured, and your UA client would have to specify that in making a connection. Um, now, if you wanted to use user authentication for top server, um, you disable this setting, and then you go to your user manager, and you'd configure user and password here. And those are the usernames and passwords that would be um, acceptable um, for, for use by your OPC UA clients. Now, those are the settings that I wanted to show you here, the other settings are in the actual OPC UA configuration, which is accessible down here in the system tray via the top server admin icon. So if I launch that, and I want to go to my trusted clients. Now here's, here's where I want to import the OPC data logger certificate um, on my remote machine. On that machine, I basically went to the trusted clients, click the import button, and browse to that file that I copied over from this machine. Um, and on that machine, I would see my OPC data logger showing up in this list of trusted clients. Um, under the instance certificates here, um, I, I clicked the export server certificate, and that allowed me to export my top server um, UA certificate from that machine and copy it over to this machine, which I imported here in my data logger. Now notice this is um, the UA settings um, are also administered here for the top server OPC UA client driver, which Renee mentioned. Uh, and I'm not going to be covering that specifically in this demo. Then the UA client driver makes it possible to tunnel data from a remote top server using that OPC UA interface. It allows a top the client driver connects to the UA, inter, UA server interface on a remote top server. And then you can expose the data from that remote top server via DDE, SuiteLink, OPC DA, um, right on the local machine. Um, so that, that, that avoids DCOM as well for clients that don't support natively OPC UA. And the last thing I want to note in my OPC UA settings for top server um, is my server endpoint. Now, if I look here, notice um, here's, here, here would be the endpoint. It's a different machine name since I'm not connecting to this local top server. Um, it's actually going to be the same. It's going to be a machine name for the machine I used in my previous demonstration. Uh, default port number here is 49380, and I did use that default port on my remote top server, so I know that's the port I'm going to use here. Um, now I'm just going to close this and go back to my data logger and set up this connection. 
Um, you could have all the all all the server connections I'm going to be doing in the same configuration. Um, if you needed to log all the data from from multiple f servers at the same time, but uh, for simplicity, so that we only have one of each configuration for for demonstration, I'm just going to do a single one for each. Uh, a project wizard opens. I'm going to click next. I'm going to give this project a name of top server underscore project. Go next. I need a new data collector again. Again, I'm going to use the OPC Unified Architecture Interface. Click Next. I'm going to give this collector a name of top server underscore UA. Next. And again, we're not using a discovery server service, um, so I'm just going to type in my endpoint, which is opc.tcp colon slash slash. Um, and top server does things a little bit differently. It uses a fully qualified DNS name. So for this one, it's going to be wwclient one dot TV office software toolbox tool com colon and then my port number of four nine three eight zero and if I click refresh notice I get my security options again and since we're using encryption here I'm going to go ahead and select the highest level of encryption that my top server supports which is sign and encrypt at a basic 256 bit encryption. Um, again, we're not using user authentication for this, so I'll leave those settings uh, disabled. Click Next. My collector is complete. Now I need to add, add the items I want to log. I'm going to name my OPC UA tag uh, group Top Server UA Tags. Next. Again, I'm going to keep the default settings of subscription based at 250 milliseconds. And I also want to manually choose the item, items I want to log again. So add, browse for items to add. Expand my endpoint here. And notice I get the, uh, I have the full hierarchy and address space of my remote top server. Um, I'm accessing sim some simulator tags just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to do a ramp, a random, and a sign tag. Click OK to apply that. Here the tags are in my group. Click Next and Finish to save my group. And I'm going to do my data storage again. Again, we're going to log to a text file. I'm going to call my text file logger top server UA text. See, again, I need to tell data logger the format that I want it to log my data. I'm just going to do the simple table mode again. And call my presentation top server UA table. Proceed. And again, um, since for just this basic example, we're just logging a timestamp and values. The wizard already has my group and my tags in here, so I'll click next and finish on my presentation. We're going to keep the same location of our other file. I just want to give that a different name. And I'm just going to call this top server UA data CSV so I can open it in Excel. Open file in shared mode. And I'm going to show you what that looks like this time. I'm going to open that file while I'm still logging to it. Next, complete that. And my project is complete at this point. Um, so I'm just going to go up to runtime, start my logging runtime. And I just have to save those changes. Call that top server UA config, save that, and my logging is going to initialize, and it's opened, by, it's opened my text file, so it's logging to that, so I'm just going to go to my text uh, log location, and it's the top server one I want, so I'm just going to go ahead and open it up. Notice it tells me that it's already being used. The other user is the OPC data logger. Um, so the setting that I enabled um, in shared mode, it allows me to be able to go in and read these values. You can't go in and make changes to it at the same time because that's just not allowed. Um, for you, know, you can't have two different applications editing the same file at the same time because you get conflicts. But I can go in and read what's already been logged. Um, if I enable that setting. If I didn't enable that setting, then the file would be completely locked. I wouldn't be able to open it at all. So that's just an important distinction to make. This concludes our demonstration of using OPC UA encryption with the OPC data logger in top server. 
As always, our support team is available to help you every step of the way. If you find you have questions or need any assistance, please do not hesitate to contact us.